At the nuclear plant of the Aksumako Corporation, one of the nuclear reactors is engulfed in radioactive flames. Drones fly around and guards rush about. Inside, the situation is even tenser, with employees running aimlessly through the corridors. Amidst the chaos, two technicians make a desperate attempt to prevent the reactor from exploding, but they can't agree on which button to press. Suddenly, out of thin air, a disheveled time traveler materializes. He tries to give advice to the employees about what to do next, but they can't hear him through the soundproof glass door. Approaching closer, the stranger advises the engineers to press the yellow button, although he himself is uncertain. Soon, two representatives of the Time Patrol appear right after him and try to arrest the guest. He disappears just in time, while the patrol members instruct the engineers not to listen to the wanderer and to press the blue button instead. Shortly after, they also mysteriously vanish. Confused technicians eventually heed the last advice, press the blue button, and things seem to calm down. Colleagues celebrate, but then a massive nuclear explosion still occurs. Many years ago, a government representative named Gilbert Alibert is about to authorize the construction of a controversial atomic plant by a Chinese corporation. During a press conference, he explains that this move will create numerous job opportunities and nuclear energy is the cleanest option available. From the hall, an eco-activist named Alice confronts a bureaucrat, noting that the company is using outdated technologies that could pose huge risks in the future. However, security removes Alice and two of her like-minded companions from the hall. And what do you think about the construction of new nuclear power plants? Perhaps it's time to abandon such a dangerous energy source. Let's discuss in the comments. At the police station, Alice's friends tell her that they managed to capture their arrest on video and that they should post it online. But Alice hesitates as the attention should be drawn to the construction of the power plant, not to them. At this moment, a police officer appears, releases Alice, and says that her father has come for her. In front of her shocked accomplices, Gilbert himself enters the room and takes her away with him. On the way home, Gilbert reproaches his daughter for resembling her late mother, who was also an eco-activist and was always on the move. Alice in turn reminds him of the bad reputation of Aksumako, hinting at her father's possible involvement in bribery. Afterward, she gets out of the car. Alice's friends call her from the station and accuse her of lying about her father. To redeem her guilt, she needs to break into her father's computer and find evidence of his illicit connections with Aksumako. Otherwise, they will publish the video, and everyone will know whose daughter she is. Alice reluctantly agrees. In the evening, Gilbert is having a drink while watching video recordings of his deceased wife. In a somber mood, he closes the laptop and goes to sleep. Meanwhile, Alice sneaks into the house, where she discovers the very same time traveler, who is also attempting to steal her father's laptop. The young man tries to explain something, but Alice hits him with a bottle. Hearing the noise, her father comes downstairs, and the daughter awkwardly explains that she came to make amends but found this wanderer who wanted to steal his laptop. However, her father suspects that they are accomplices and threatens to call the police. Suddenly, a bright light flashes in the yard. At the same moment, the future guest regains consciousness and tries to explain to them that they cannot allow the construction of the power plant. Simultaneously, the patrol engages in a shootout and injures Gilbert. As they try to break inside, the traveler grabs Alice and her father, transporting them to the future. Awakening in strange catacombs, Alice immediately kicks an unknown guy and runs towards the light. Reaching the edge, she sees the post-apocalyptic city of Paris in horror. In shock, Alice loses consciousness, but someone's hand prevents her from falling. Meanwhile, the patrol agents Luis Matteo and Victor return to their headquarters, where they are reprimanded for the failure. The head, named Constance, scolds them for missing the main criminal and time traveler who could disrupt the space-time continuum. Therefore, from now on, Luis will lead the operation. And what do you think? Could changing the past be more dangerous than the disasters threatening humanity? Alice wakes up in a messy room. From the neighboring room, she hears her father's voice assuring her that they've been taken to some sort of prison. Suddenly, a guy named Raph enters, the same one Alice hit when they first met. He suggests grabbing a bite to eat and explains that it's not prison, it's his bedroom. They live here because it's not advisable to go outside, and he also ended up here accidentally from the 21st century. Raph proposes continuing their conversation in the laboratory, where the visitor is waiting for them. He also brings Alice's father there 
who threatens them all with punishment. The visitor ironically points to the door and says they can go. Gilbert presses a button, a heavy metal door opens, and behind it unexpectedly appears a crowd of grotesque zombies. They close the door in horror, and the visitor jokes that he forgot to tell them about the zombies. At this moment, the third member of the gang, Dr. Henry Castafolt, enters the laboratory. He explains that besides the regular walking zombies, there are more dangerous infected ones they call runners. All these zombies appear due to radiation. They show an old video about a nuclear catastrophe, and Alice declares that she was right. But Gilbert denies everything and even refuses to believe that they are in the future. As proof, the guys brutally clear a path through the zombies and suggest going for a walk. In a rusty armored car, the guests are taken on a tour of the ruined streets. Suddenly, they stop and order Gilbert to admire the main attraction. A massive radioactive cloud orbits the Earth every 70 years, destroying all living things. Over time, it grows larger, so this time, no one will survive. After witnessing what the world has become, Gilbert admits his mistake, and the visitor prepares to shoot him. Alice shields her father and begs to find another way to save humanity. The visitor explains that stealing the laptop and causing a political scandal was the other way. But now they need to be liquidated, as the Time Brigade will still find them to prevent changes in the course of time. At this moment, Gilbert loses consciousness. While everyone is puzzled, Raf suggests another option. In order for the Time Patrol not to notice the changes, the alterations must be internal rather than external. Then a person can change the course of history themselves. Dr. Henry Castafold surprisingly admits that Raph is right. Alice also tries to convince the visitor that her father can change, as he wasn't always a cynical bureaucrat. The visitor agrees, but warns that if the patrol finds them, he will have to act. Meanwhile, the Time Brigade visits and extracts from the wanderer the location of the visitor's lab. On the way, Alice shares that only her mother, who passed away during childbirth, could change him. The visitor immediately hints that they won't save her mother as in that case, Alice probably won't be even born, creating a paradox. She would exist while not existing at the same time. Raph suggests showing Dilbert their hidey out to influence him, but the visitor sharply silences him. Next, Henry goes to the lab, and the rest decide to check out a local pub. While Alice and her father interact with the local patrons, the visitor and Raph discuss the potential of the girl, and even consider recruiting her into the gang. A dispute breaks out between the daughter and father, and everyone learns that it's because of Gilbert that the radioactive cloud will soon annihilate them all. Cunningly deceiving the enraged crowd with an offer of free drinks, Gilbert and the others hastily leave the establishment. Encountering a horde of zombies, the visitor tries to teleport the entire group, but the device indicates low battery. Suddenly, a gang led by someone named Lise Weasel comes to their aid and distracts the zombies. Meanwhile, a time patrol raid takes place in the lab. Noticing them in advance, Henry gathers what's necessary, activates self-destruct mode, and exits the lab. Immediately, a powerful explosion resounds, obliterating everything in its path. In the ruined lab, the patrol led by Louise finds a map of the hideout. Meanwhile, the group arrives at the very hideout, a hidden settlement with remnants of civilization and children. As they relax, Raph suggests that Alice join their gang and reveals that they even have a real robot. The visitor explains to Lease Weasel that he didn't want to bring these people, as he doesn't trust them. However, the Lease Weasel reassures the visitor that people deserve a chance and not everyone needs to be liquidated. During lunch, badly burnt Henry suddenly teleports onto the table and informs that the patrol is about to show up. Moments later, the patrol appears in the hideout, and Least Weasel orders them to take positions. The children systematically flip tables and pelt the enemies with stones. One of the patrol members throws a grenade, which is heroically covered by Dr. Henry. Scattered mechanical body parts reveal that the so-called Dr. Henry Castafault was the very robot. In anger, the visitor grabs a gun and prepares to shoot Gilbert again, blaming him for everything that is going on. With a disapproving look, Lee's Weasel signals the visitor not to do it. The visitor lowers the weapon and receives an electric shock from one of the patrol members. Raph tries to defend himself, but he's also hit. Lee's Weasel orders the others to surrender. Louise removes her helmet and explains that they came only for a few individuals. The patrol arrests the visitor and Raph, 
and takes Gilbert and Alice away. In the Time Brigade office, Constance thanks Alice for helping them catch a dangerous criminal, but Alice is convinced that the visitor wants to save the planet. While the patrol doesn't even attempt to make the world better, she believes that humanity can be saved without time travel. She just needs to go back and steal her father's laptop. However, Constance assures Alice that she won't succeed in doing that. Constance leaves the room and in her place, Alice from the future comes in. She tells present-day Alice that stealing her dad's laptop and interfering with his actions is not a good idea. She assures Alice that she has had a wonderful life, made possible only because of their father and people don't know anything except complaining about the world. Future Alice also reveals that their father will soon get sick as he started drinking heavily after their mother's death. Therefore, she advises present-day Alice to spend as much time with their father as possible. The patrol returns Alice and Gilbert to their present, the exact time and place before their arrival. In the morning, Gilbert gets ready for work and noticing the laptop on the table, remembers Alice. He looks into her childhood room where she pretends to be asleep. Meanwhile, the captive visitor and Raph are brought to Constance's office. She declares that the guys will finally pay for all the ruined lives. However, the visitor claims that he actually saved many lives, but Constance can't know it. According to him, when time travelers succeed, time resets and the patrol doesn't remember anything. Only those who change time can remember the alternative reality. The patrol employees are puzzled, and an infuriated Constance orders them not to trust the criminal. For their committed crimes, they will be placed in the hole, a prison without time. At that moment, Gilbert heads out to sign documents with Aksumako, but he suddenly changes his mind. At home, Alice asks why he didn't sign the documents, and he replies that he just wants to spend the day with her. In the patrol office, a signal is received about critical changes in time. The visitor explains that these are internal changes in Gilbert and they can't interfere. Angrily, Constance claims she can do anything. She orders her employees to find Gilbert and make him sign the papers, and if he refuses, to eliminate his useless daughter who has no ambitions and no influence on him. Louise doubts the legality of such an order, but Constance suspends her and sends Matteo and Victor on the mission. Meanwhile, she instructs Louise to send the prisoners to the hole. Meanwhile, in the future, the radioactive cloud is approaching the hideout, and Lise Weasel asks Henry, still dismantled, to do something about it. Victor and Matteo break into Gilbert's house and threatening his daughter, Matteo takes him for the document signing. Suspecting something is wrong, Constance sends her assistant Richard after Louise. At the last moment, Louise actually decides to switch sides and tricks Richard into falling into the hole. She releases the prisoners, hoping that if they succeed, nobody will remember it. Raph reveals that Louise won't remember this, but she has already helped them. According to the plan, Raph should save Alice from Victor, the visitor should deal with Matteo and help Gilbert, and Louise should take care of Constance. Raph clumsily appears right in front of Alice and Victor, who promptly knocks him out. Similarly, the visitor awkwardly teleports onto Gilbert's car roof. Louise reports to Constance that the task is done, but Constance skeptically inquires about Richard's whereabouts. Just then, they inform Constance that the prisoners have escaped. She cleverly dims the lights in the room and attacks the bewildered Louise. Meanwhile, Raph regains consciousness and starts teleporting from place to place, not giving Victor a chance to shoot him. Matteo steps out to check if the fallen visitor is alive. Suddenly, the visitor grabs Matteo by the leg and they are both transported to the times of World War I. In the future, the cloud is almost reaching the Hattie out. Least Weasel urges Henry to hurry, but he nervously exclaims that he simply doesn't have the time to build a time machine. Meanwhile, in the fields of World War I, Matteo and the visitor engage in a spectacular fight, but suddenly, they are bombarded by airstrikes. Alice helps Raph overcome Victor and calls her father. However, Constance appears and snatches Gilbert's phone, announcing that the visitor has been neutralized. At the same time, Matteo teleports with the bound the visitor right to the machine. In the Hattie out, Henry delivers the sad news that he won't be able to build the time machine. The hopeless children wait for the end. Gilbert is about to sign the documents when something strange begins to happen. It turns out that Raph and Alice have been transported to the moment of her birth and pointing a gun at Henry, order him to save her mother. Everything around them vibrates, disappears, and changes. Constance is furious, and the visitor explains that Alice is erasing herself from the timeline. Meanwhile, Alice's mother regains consciousness during childbirth, seats her grown-up daughter, and asks who she is. Alice responds that she is nobody and slowly fades away. Gilbert realizes what's happening and cries out that he doesn't want to forget his daughter. He shouts her name, 
but suddenly he comes to his senses in the kitchen, where one of his daughters asks who Alice is. His wife approaches and reveals that Alice was their sister, who didn't survive birth. Shocked, Gilbert remembers he was supposed to sign something. His wife tells him that he already signed everything and puts a newspaper in front of him with an article about Gilbert launching an eco-friendly renewable energy project. The visitor wakes up from a severe headache. Least Weasel inquires about his condition, and Dr. Henry explains that the brain is reprocessing the surrounding reality. When asked about the radioactive cloud, Least Weasel replies that it didn't exist. Henry adds that this time, a patrol employee actually helped them, and unlike her colleagues, she remembers everything. So now they have their own agent, and possibilities are limitless. During the celebration at the pub, Henry explains to a bewildered Raph that Alice created an unprecedented time paradox. They approach a table where Alice is already waiting for them. She confesses that she doesn't understand anything herself. Henry explains that she managed to undo her own birth, yet she hasn't disappeared. Otherwise, it would have canceled out her action in this version of reality. In other words, she exists while not existing. It was the movie The Visitor from the Future. I hope I managed to explain this tangled up film. I've always been into wrapping my head around time travel paradoxes. What about you? Could you give up your regular life in the present to save humanity in the future? Let's talk about it in the comments.